All right, so uh, I think we're live now. Okay, so I'm just gonna check on the audio quality, the connection, uh, the connection and the image quality. So let me know for those of you who have joined how uh, the tech here from my site. Norris says, what's up? Hi there, Norris. How are you, my friend? Uh, please let me know how's the audio, how's the videos, and how's the connection overall. Uh, today, I just found one small setting here in the stream setting, which lets you kind of set up the interactions and, you know, interaction between the, the, the one who's in the, in the live as well as me. So it is called latency here. So uh, I found out that low latency will make your chat and my videos uh, kind of goes like in real time. So probably it might help speed up when you type in the chat and kind of and might see it faster. So let's see how it goes for today. There, there's also an ultra low latency as well, but I assume this would make uh, this would make the uh, the video quality much lower. I assume because it says normal latency. Videos will be of the highest quality, but less interactions. Low latency is probably in the middle, and ultra low low latency is very very good interaction, but very low quality. So let's try with low latency first for today. Uh, Norris says it seems faster now. Oh, good, good. We'll we'll see throughout the chat how's the interactions going. Uh, but it's just one small setting which I found. So <laughs> let's see. Okay, so we'll probably wait for maybe two more minutes for more people to join and we shall get started with the sessions. Today we have a very big thing that I'm I want to discuss. Um, some of the subscribers, they already know what I'm about to kind of sp uh, speak about today, but yeah, it's going to be a big one. So hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully you stick around. Um, don't have to stick around till the end, but uh, yeah, it's going to be like, mostly it's going to be on this topic only. So let's see. Norris says about 20 to 30 second delay versus about almost two minutes before. Awesome. Maybe next week I might try ultra low latency, but I'm not sure how the video quality will be. So I'll check it first um, for the video quality after this meeting and I'll see how the video quality. And we'll tr maybe try ultra low latency as well and see how that goes. Okay, so currently we have two more two people in the in the live stream. So maybe we'll wait for maybe one or two more and we'll start with the uh, what's new in SEO basically. And also, uh, I've already got a site to review for today. Like someone sent me uh, yesterday to kind of have a look at their at his website because he was hit by what I'm about to discuss today. It's a new algorithm update, which is quite a big one as well. So um, one site is now already in my list to review. If any one of you have any of your site that you would like me to have a review on, just make sure let me know as well. Okay. All right. So I think we sh we can get started now, so we don't waste any one of your time. So are you ready for the SEO news this week as well as last week? Uh, more people will probably join later on. That's let's see. Okay, I think I'm gonna start now with the SEO news so we don't waste our time. All right, so uh, this is the website where I get all my SEO news from. It's called seoroundtable.com. For those of you who have joined and doesn't know, um, it is run by a guy called Barry Schwartz. He has been in the SEO industry forever, and this is the most up all the up most up to date SEO news you can find here. Okay, so start off, let's kind of start off with the biggest news of the week, which was uh, on April 12th, right? So two days before, uh, two days ago, 
Google release a new algorithm called Google Product Reviews Update. And uh, it was a, it, it is aimed for mostly the review sites or review content, right? So mostly it is targeting affiliate marketers, people who uh, review, um, you know, products, stuff like that. And, uh, and you know, yeah, it, it is a big, very big update. Um, the impact could be seen throughout uh, for various websites. Um, some people have seen, you know, like a big, um, increase in their website some of their website even tanked like entire night it was released on april 8th and from m- many people whom i have talked to within like i don't know one or two hours they, they could feel the impact so it was really big and it's it's almost similar to core update as well the impact which i've seen uh, throughout the facebook groups and people who send me their screenshots so um they just came out of nowhere actually <clears throat> this update uh, this update was uh, first announced on the official google uh, search liaison account account uh, so i don't know where is that yeah it was announced on the google officials um, twitter account right so this is the first big news that came out last week and um, not last week actually about two days ago really um so yeah this is the first news apart from that last week there was really nothing much um as far as you know last week is concerned so this is one 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 thing which you know some of you might be a little bit confused so google says that um sometimes actually in most cases they would kind of treat 302 redirect the same as 301 redirect right so 301 redirects um is um, what the SEO is, is, is like an S best SEO practices for, you know, let's say if you want to change your URL or you change your domain. So when you want to transfer all the signals um, from one domain or URL to the other, you would use what we call 301 redirects, right? Which is a code for redirections. So in most cases, Google would also treat 302 redirect the same as 301 redirect. So they would transfer all the signals across, right? So this is also uh, not not so anything new, but um, just so you know that um, Google can easily process this as well. You know, even though if you don't put in a correct 301 redirect, still your normal redirect would be, you know, uh, all the signals will be passed using the normal redirect as well. All right. So another news here for Google My Business. Um, so here Google officially announced that uh, phone numbers are not allowed in Google Post, right? So Google Posts are basically what you kind of post on your Google My Business um, listings, right? Kind of like, you know, uh, uh, social media posts, stuff like that. So they, they um, initially, they, they kind of used to say it, but uh, now they kind of make it official now that, you know. Um, so this is their st- statement quoted from their policies. It is, uh, so here I quote, to avoid the risk of abuse, we do not allow your post content to include a phone number. You can make your phone number available on your business profile or website. So this is the new policy update on the Google My Business uh, policy page. So feel free to check it out. And uh, next, let me see what we can have here. So, um, yep, this is also another in- interesting part regarding the, the Core Web Vitals that's coming in May this year, 2021, which is about uh, less than a month after to, uh, from today. So Google said that in their official um, Google Hangout, um, in their official Google Hangout on YouTube, you, uh, John Miller said that uh, page experience algorithm or core web vitals update won't be real time which means that let's say if for some whatever reason your site got hit by this you know core web vitals if after you got hit you improve on it you would have to wait at least about 28 days right 28 days to kind of recover back from this um uh, for the from the hit right from the impact of this update so uh, because you know it, it makes sense because 
the um, the page experience right is collected from Google Chrome um, from the Chrome I think Chrome uh, from their Chrome um, engine right so it would take some time for them to kind of update your core web vitals um, score or whatever they would call it right so it's not going to be real time you're not going to see instant impact um, you know it, it, let's say after you got hit so keep that in mind as well and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it when it comes to oh okay sorry um, this is also another big um, important one as well which I almost missed so yesterday April 13th Google says that um, not says but they advise or they give a recommendation that you should break a wine while content uh, from the non wine while content to separate sites so for those of you who don't know what wine while is is basically stands for your money your life uh, queries or type of content so it is the type of content you know which google kind of classify as being something that has a direct impact on people's lives on people's um, um financial situations right so let's say so this in, so this includes the niche such as health, finance, and you know e-commerce probably because you know it involves people making you know buying decisions, right? So these type of queries or website or content, Google give an advice that they should be separated into separate sites. So you you don't want to mix your non wine while content with wine while content, right? Because uh, here. Um, so here it is so here john Mueller uh, said and i quote it's always going to be challenging for google's algorithm to figure out how to deal with uh, how to deal with that website so regardless of anything around ymyl or eat or anything if you have this mix of very uh, polar opposites almost with regards to content then i would assume that google's algorithms are always going to struggle with figuring out how to rank your website so if you kind of have you know two type of content on your website it's better to kind of separate them out into different websites so keep that in mind as well you know um just for safety because you know it's just an algorithm right it can always make a mistake so you don't want to confuse the algorithm there and you know besides everything that i reported you know um all the news are pretty much you know surrounding this the product up review update which I'm gonna talk about in details in today's video as well so last news regarding the product review update just for today um, Google said that the product review update refreshes won't likely all uh, will like won't likely all be announced or confirmed so here um, Google they said that you know um, you know so Danny Sullivan, which is a search Google search liaison who represents, you know, the public relation of the Google um, search, he said that at the moment there's periodic um, refresh. Unlike with core updates, we might not always post when a refresh happens, given the more limited nature of content involved here. So keep that in mind that if you're hit with uh, by this Google product reviews um they're gonna be a refresh so you know your your score will be recalculated and you can recover back from this update even if you're hit by it so keep that in mind that's a good ho uh, that's a good sign but again they won't announce it you know if they kind of refresh on the algo here all right so that's all for the latest news um for the latest news here and uh, so yeah we've got lots of news from this week as well as last week and uh, I hope you like how I report the news today I think I went quite fluidly <laughs> okay so yeah <clears throat> uh, okay if do we have any questions we don't seem to have any questions Skilev says, hey Jackie, how are you? I'm good, Skilev, how are you? He says, my clicks dropped by 50%, same with daily impressions. Then, uh, unfortunately, it seems like you're hit, my friend, and your screenshot does seem to say so. 
okay all right so do ha any of you have any questions before we kind of get started into uh, talking about what's the fuss around this Google's product review update, which I like to kind of talk about a lot here. Uh, school me asked, does your training show how to make backlinks? You mean my Skillshare course there? Uh, it's not very like into details, but yeah, I, I, I did go through, I did go through basically the, uh, what do you say? I did go through like the, the kind of like a process basically. Um, I mostly just focus on guest posts, uh, really, um, not really anything else because anything else are pretty much useless anyway. So I only look at guest posts and yes, I, I do kind of show you what you can like the strategies of what you can expect to to do like you know kind of research on the site what type of site to look for when building links and how to kind of ne negotiate with the site owners probably something like that and yeah and you know what 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 to look for right when before you choose a site st stuff like that but regarding web 2.0 links and you know comments and all those stuff uh, I, I don't really teach that any in my course in fact i don't really use them anyway i mean i do use them very sparingly like occasionally really just to kind of mix in the details but really it's, it's, it shouldn't be difficult right web 2.0 is just you register an account and you just create a content link to it um, i don't think it's really difficult anyway okay so uh any of you have any questions Norris, my friend, do you have any questions? Um, Skilef, do you have anything before I kind of talk about the Google product reviews of what it actually means and how can you kind of improve your site from my opinion to really recover or, um, you know, um, to survive the update. <laughs> okay, Skillev says, let's start a discussion. Sure, all right, that sounds good, so we don't waste anyone's time here. Okay, so for those of you who have been in the, who have kind of, you know, watched the news or maybe noticed that your site, uh, uh, your site's traffic, your site's uh, rankings, have dropped over the past week or over the past few days, actually not week, then you're likely being hit by a new algorithm update, which Google just released called us the Google's product reviews update. So first of all, this update was, was released to primarily target review type content or basically affiliate marketing, um, affiliate marketers, right? Because Affiliate marketers are probably, you know, mostly are going to, you know, earn money through reviewing products, right? And this update, although it doesn't mention anything about affiliates, it is basically targeting mostly affiliate marketers. But keep that in mind that the way that they have highlighted their guidelines here can be used in any type of website, any type of content. It's, it's not just about product review here. In the future, it is very likely that they would also, or they might already have started doing the same thing on service review as well, or even normal service, right? So let's say if someone does a search for roofing near me or roofing in, let's say, in New York, then, you know, this guideline can still be applied to that type of website. So basically, um, lower down the funnel, right, like the, the type of content that kind of, you know, that kind of affects people um, buying decisions. Um, can probably be the um, impact or, you know, um, yeah, can probably be impact by this update as well. So here Google published an official uh, documents here on their um, website, which kind of explain um, what are the things that they're, they're looking for when it comes to, you know, when it comes to uh, product review creation, right, content creation here. So, 
and it is good that they have released this guideline because we can actually use them as a as an uh, as a way of how we can go uh, move ahead and write our content moving forward right so here you know here are some of the additional useful questions to consider in terms of product reviews do your reviews so these are the set of questions that you need to be asking yourself you know when creating a product review type content or similar type of content i'm going to go through each and every point here and kind of explain what it means from my uh from my point of view and how i understand things okay so the first part point here is express expert knowledge about products where appropriate so here um, um the main stress here is probably means on the expert knowledge here right so what do you mean by expert knowledge? Do you really have to go and you know buy all the product and start you know reviewing them by yourself? Um, it's likely not not in that case, but if you can do it, that's a huge bonus for you. But expert knowledge here probably means the use of certain expert knowledge language, right? So what you want to do here is basically you want to kind of you know look at your competitors and see the style of you know of the uh, language that they use in their content first of all to kind of mimic the the, uh, the what google expects of your content to have certain words so let's say if you do a, a review for let's say best protein pr powder then you know you would naturally have to include the words such as you know protein powder bodybuilding muscles all these you know important words so these are this will be the first set of things that you would be doing next you would also want to include certain words that are only unique to you right so remember this is a content uh, on page type update so it is going to be um, dealing with how google understands your content right so the use of you know um, unique word that are only an expert a true expert would know um, you know is the way that you, they would be looking here so they're looking for some unique pattern usage of words here right so this is the thing so for the first point second point show what the product is like physically or how it is used with unique content beyond what's provided by the manufacturer here again um you know you have to kind of uh, show um you know so here show how it looks in physically so this can include you know showing unique images of the product of you actually re 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 reviewing the product if you you have bought it or you may you know try like photoshopping your yourself with the product stuff like that right and also how it is used how to kind of use the product so you kind of have to explain how the product looks along with the images the visuals how it is used basically you know how to use the products with unique content again the use of unique words beyond what's provided by the man manufacturer right so what's provided by the manufacturers are probably going to be you know um, full reviews of what the product is about but in your case what you can do here is you can include you know um, topics or you know subtopics on the page that are beyond what the manufacturer um, have included on their page so basically um, you know don't just talk about the product um, and you know, uh, like basically don't just stress on a pr on one product but you know do a complete con compare and contrast um, you know among all the products together right and give your point of view um, for each of the products next provide quantitative measurements about how a product measures up in various categories of performance so notice the word quantitative measurements here so google is looking for something very specific quantitative so it could be numbers it could be you know pie chart it could be you know stats it could be something that you know is very quantitative right and that the algorithms can easily understand so make sure when you write the content you're not using any you know subjective words to when you explain what the product um you know what is the benefit of the product what what measures of the product stuff like that but make sure you be very specific of what you write and you know give a very easy to understand um language use that next explain what sets a product apart from its competitors so i think this is very you know sufficient is quite self self explanatory here is that you know basically what sets each product apart from its competitors so it's a complete like compare comparison right pros and cons stuff like that 
Next point, cover comparable products to consider or explain which products might be best for certain uses or circumstances. So again, you kind of have, uh, this is pretty much like pros and cons, right, from the previous point. But here you might have to kind of dive into details as to buy product A versus product B and why product B, uh, product A should be used or should be considered uh, instead of product B. And in what circum circumstances product B should be considered to use versus product A. So the way you use the con the language here is very important, right? So you would kind of use the word like, um, so let's say, for example, you do a comparison between protein powder A versus protein powder B. So you might have a small conclusion snippet at the bottom of each, re of each product and say something like, um, here, we think that product A is better than product B because, right? So you have the word A better than B, which is, makes it easier to understand, right? For the algorithms, it clearly says what's better than what because, so you give us the reason, Product A does X, Y, Z, stuff like that. So it all lies on how you use language, right? You have to make sure that you use language that's very clear, specific, and precise that, you know, probably something like a five-year-old could easily understand. Discuss the benefits and drawbacks of a particular product based on research into it. So again, you know, benefits and drawback, pretty straightforward. And, you know, use a... Based on research, so maybe, you know, again, unique word is required, expert knowledge, right? Next point, describe how a product has evolved from previous models or releases to provide improvements, address issues, or otherwise help users in making purchase decisions. So um, again, you know, for this point, you might have to do a little bit of the research and check, you know, the product, um, what the, the, the difference, you know, the different models of the products or stuff like that. Um, but again, you know, actually this might not be that important in my opinion. It, it's just, you know, what, what kind of set the product apart, right? So basically you, you can, this can be anything of your own unique point. Um, I don't think this would be anything uh, that important anyway. But if you can do it, then that's good. Then this point, identify key decision-making factors for the product categories and how the product performs in those areas. For example, a car review might determine that fuel economy, safety, and handling are key decision-making factors and rate performance in those areas. Okay, so this is an important point here that you have to keep in mind. So for each of the product, you have to make sure that each features are, you know, are discussed uh, in a very thorough manner and make sure that all the key decision-making factors are discussed. So this again, you know, if you look at it, the word car is all is often associated with the word feel, feel right, with the word safety, with the word uh, economy, stuff like that. So it's again, the usage of words, which words are in relation to what words, right? This again will come from your research on the competitors Make sure you look at your competitors and see what are the words that, you know, they use um, in association. So let's say if they're, again, I'll come back to my protein powder examples. If they write a content review on protein powder, they would naturally have to include the words such as muscles, bodybuilding, and stuff like that. But then there will be certain words that are oftenly repeated again and again. And you have to understand that what are those words that are, that are going to make an impact you know, in the decision making factors here, right? So um, you have to discuss these um, topics in details, right? And then lastly, describe key choices and how a product has been designed and their effect on users beyond what the manufacturer says. So this again is very similar to um, adding your own unique points of what you think the product um, that, you know, each product, why it is better than the other stuff like that. So to kind of summarize this up, uh, first, what the, some of the things that you can kind of do here. So let me kind of summarize it for you to understand. Um, so first, you know, you make sure, make sure um, you, you know, you keep these question sets, right? Questions um, to... Uh, Make sure you, you consider these questions, right? So make sure you consider these 
questions every time you, uh, you write your content, right? So again, you know, go through this set of this set of questions again and again and try to understand, right? And keep this in mind. So when you write your content, you make sure that you answer all these questions. Next, right? Um, research uh, your competitors for the um, use of words that are you know um, important right so this for this method what you can do here is you can use um, you know tools like surfer SEO right which can which will kind of you know um, reverse engineer your competitors and um, suggest you the words that are repeated again and again by the competitors or that are important uh, for your content and you have to make sure that you include all the important words right that are often used again and again by the competitors again you know muscle building bodybuilding uh, muscles all this you know when it comes to po protein powder okay and then next when writing content Make sure it's clear, precise, quantitative, right? Quantitative, and add your own. Basically, I'll just add this uh, quantitative, um, just like how you would explain the concept to a five year old kid. So this is a very important thing, you know, when you write a content, you have to make sure that you break your content to different sections very clearly. Each paragraph, each sentence should be written in a very easy to understand, clear, precise and quantitative manner so that the algorithms can understand. Right. Because right now, um, you know, 90 percent of the searches are kind of, you know, driven by BERT, which is a natural language processing, um, you know, um, machine learning algorithm there. So it will be able to understand natural language pattern. So something like, you know, um, this product is better than, um, um, you know, that product because, so this is how the algorithm will un understand, right? So this product, you understand that this product, it is a reference to this product is better than the, the product because, and then if you write something like X, Y, Z, it will, this will kind of reference back to the first product, right? So there will be some kind of like, you know, an arrow here. So if I, probably I can show you here. So I will show you how the NLP algorithms can kind of, you know, analyzes the context. So you can go to the Google NLP uh, API demo, which is obviously you know um, not what Google is using in their algorithms, but um, yeah, so it will it will show it will give you a great idea of you know how NLP understands languages. Uh, Uh, it's stuck, so probably have to wait. <laughs> um, window is stuck here. Oh, uh, the windows crash. <laughs>
Oh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm using my mobile here to type a chat. Oh, it's back. Ooh. Okay, so, so far, have you all understood? I'm just gonna make a small pause here before I kind of continue. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do your side review, my friend Skilef. Don't worry about that. Oh man, the window stuck again. <laughs> this this happens. I mean, not every time, but okay, great. I mean, it seems like everyone has understood so far. I'm just gonna show you a small demo of how the NLP uh, understands language, so you can understand, you know, what to expect. But it's stuck again. Probably just bear with me for maybe two minutes, I guess. Okay, it's back. <laughs> okay, great. So, awesome. So, yeah. So, let me show you uh, how the NLP understand languages. So, you can kind of ex understand. Why is it not opening? Okay. I'm just going to continue with this. Okay. So fourth, um, you know, when writing, uh, make sure you add your own unique points. So important here, you know, so unique points, right? Uh, there are only your own unique, unique points, unique uses of words that only experts will use. So unique use of words, right? So it doesn't have to be anything, you know, fancy here. If you have used certain words that are, you know, very unique to only your page, that will still likely be counted as expert you, uh, words, right? Because it is only unique to yours. So definitely, if anything is unique, then it is, you know, expert. Oh, man, this window keeps on stuck. Uh, I'll see if I can open this. Just. I will do your site review now as well, uh, actually your page, so we can understand. But this windows keep on st 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 getting stuck. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, th these are probably my four recommendations as of now. And it, it seems these all, you know, are all based on you know how the algorithm understand languages basically so you just have to make sure it's very clear it's very precise and the use of words are very important so you know make sure you divide your your content to very clear precise subtopics and the usage of um, expert words or unique words will be very important in your content instead of you know regurgitating what others have already said with this with the product again and again right and that's the main thing here. So these are my four recommendations. I hope you make a good notes on this. Now I'm going to do a quick page or keyword reviews from my friend here, Skilef. Uh, but uh, the window is crashed. So I don't know if I can open it up here. And if I close down the windows, 
the browser, the stream will end, I think. Got stuck. Oh yeah, and, and keep that in mind that, you know, these recommendations can definitely be used for all type of your on-page content. It's not just about product reviews. Sure, certain points here are only uh, for product reviews, right? Like, you know, make sure you add like pros and cons, stuff like that. But this point is important. Research what words are used uh, by your competitors. This point is important. Make sure that your content is clear, precise, and quantitative. When you write your content, make sure it's easy, easy uh, digestible by your by the AI, by the, the algorithms. So it, it will not get confused, right? And it will not find a hard time to run your content. And obviously, make use of unique words um, that you know that are like kind of like you know your 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 selling propositions, right? So let's say you write a sales page, you want to rank that sales page. You know, you would obviously try to rank for certain keywords, but adding some of your own unique points as well will make it, you know, stand out from your competitors. So this applies to all type of content, basically. But again, we are more focused on product reviews here. Oh yeah, and uh, by the way, let me kind of show you my new background. If we can... Yeah, you see this? This is my new, my new desktop background. I just changed it. Let me know how you think. Just changed it uh, two days ago. I um, think it looks good. <laughs> Uh, oh man, I don't know when will this stop. I don't want to close down the win the browsers because the stream will end. Probably I'm, I might have to try to close down all the tabs. So let me see here. I'm closing down all the tabs. <laughs> too much pizza is bad yeah I mean it's just for showing there I'll try to see if I can what what can I do oh I think the, the incognito window works probably let me see oh man today we're we're discussing on something big and this happens yeah, but I've, I've managed to close down all the tabs now, so this should kind of boost it up a little bit. Oh, man. We're almost at the end, basically. I'm just going to review a page to kind of check. But we're stuck here. Oh, I think it's working now. Okay, so let me look at your site, your page, basically. Uh, let me copy it. You're lucky, my friend Skillef, it works now. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Okay, so this is the page that, you know, uh, my friend gave me, Skilev, to kind of have a look at this keyword as, as why he fell a drop, okay? So I'll kind of quite try to go real quick through the content. Um, so just give me a few moments. I'm trying to read, go through content very quick. I'm a vegan, I can eat eggs. How do I get protein? Okay. 
it's pretty long content actually uh, quick reviews Yeah, I think I, I I think I spot your first mistake, my friend Skilev. You see, when you write any content, um, I think I mentioned it last time. I'm not sure. You have to kind of try to get to the point as quickly as possible, right? Don't try to go for word counts. Here, what you're doing here is you you start explaining about veganism. You start explaining, showing the trend of vegan here. You explain what is vegan diet, right? So I don't think these are necessary. It's probably the first few, you know, first few first, like, you know, the first couple of first few paragraphs are very important for Google to, to understand what your content is about. If you start explaining, you know, what is veganism and, you know, the stats of vegans in the first few paragraphs, it will confuse, right? Google will not understand that. Are you trying to do a review of the product or are you trying to write about veganism here? First few paragraphs are very, very important try to get to the point as quickly as possible. You can also make it as like a quick summaries of what your page is basically about. You can go like this, right? You start off with the first paragraph, you say, okay, product A is better than product B because of this, this, this. And here in this review, I'm gonna explain to you why, and then jump to the full details after that. Uh, he said, that's why I added that quick review table. Sure, you added a quick review table, but again, you know, Algorithm, the algo will not, it is, it, you know, you see, this is just a small part, right? Out of, you know, how many lines here, out of how many words here. It reads sentences, right? I mean, sure, it, it eats this up as a, as a form of content. But again, you're stacking this up in, in the middle of veganism. So it's, it's confusing, right? Whether it's this a veganism or this a reviewing right here. You're mixing up two content topic here on this, on, you know, this chunk of paragraphs. Again, like I said, you get to the point as quickly as possible, right in natural language. Remember, like I said, this product is better than that product because why, X, Y, Z, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to put it on the top. You have to say why this, you have to get to the point as quickly as possible, right? You have to say, okay, this X better than this because this, 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 here are some of my reviews and then you start writing in details. What is vegan diet? Again, I would remove this for sure. How can vegan eat high protein food? Again, I don't see why this would be here, right? You're reviewing a product. You're not kind of educating people on what is vegan, why you should eat, how you can eat, stuff like that. Advantages of using vegan product uh, protein supplements. I also don't see why this. This is where your actual review start, my friend. You see how many sentences, how many words before Google actually gets. They in, these are all into the words. You see how many words. So let me try to copy this. I'll go to wordcounter.com. I'm, I'm going to show you. 1,000 words. Bro, that's huge. This is too much, my friend. This is the biggest reason probably right now, I assume. I haven't gone through yet, but... This, you should remove this junk, man, for sure. Start here. This is where actual review starts. Ingredients and nutritional information. Ingredient list. I like that. It is listed in very detailed, uh, quantitative, easy to digest manner. Primary source of protein. This supplement is pea, rice, protein. Rice doesn't have a lot of protein. It's carbohydrate. Okay. I like this. It is very quantitative, easy to understand. That's good. Again, numbers. Remember, make use of numbers. Amino acid profiles. Okay. Um, how to use? How to use? Okay, that's good. Um, vegan, pro, vegan protein powder versus whey protein. Uh, probably you might not need this. I'm not sure. Like you know, you're reviewing this product. So you want you might just only want to talk about this product instead of talking about vegan in general. So this can actually be you know one info, uh, content on itself. Probably you might not need that. And uh, where were where was I? Yeah, 
so maybe this junk might not be needed because it's not related to the product although yeah you're educating people that okay vegan product versus whey protein which one to actually go for but again you know <clears throat> people who are actually here might probably know about it and it's not kind of 100% related anyway so i might try to remove this best time to use best time to use what i don't know the algorithm doesn't know what best time to use mention it here as well right best time to use what is this uh this name right okay pc vegan protein powder mention it here so it understand make it very clear precise how many servings in a day again if you can mention the name of the product that's good how to gain muscle on vegan diet probably i don't need this again it's just vegan diet mixed with this product remember be specific here remember be specific here clear precise probably i might have here specific right you don't want to confuse the algorithm right this is just a five-year-old dumb kid so get to the point pros and cons um again if you mention your product name here that would be good i like that this is in formatted in list and price that's good and here are the facts okay conclusion so this is the like this you can again i would try to kind of cut down your conclusion here and just again try kind of reaffirm why you think this product is good um in a very like, again clear precise manner you don't have to go with say something like you can be a vegan a protein rich meals every day stuff like that vegan protein supplements can help maintain a positive nitrogen again this may not be needed just say reaffirm as to why you think this product is good cut straight forward to the point maybe i might only keep this much and this one so yeah this is a complete review actually and these are all my points i think i spotted lots of mistakes and i'm sure you got all of the points so yeah let me know how you think in the chat and that's the review of the page i think it was a very good thorough review actually <laughs> Let me know skill f if you're still there in the chat it is a very valuable information actually skill f says all right bro so content length doesn't matter definitely not doesn't matter my friend i mean you've um you've been following me for quite some times i'm pretty sure you might have heard me saying it multiple times that don't write for the sake of word count you don't want to include any ir irrelevant things right on your content even though if you think it's relevant you don't i mean you don't want to go you don't want to drift away from the topic that's important you have you want to be very specific clear straightforward precise to the point um and you know like here if you mention if you add your own unique points definitely your word count will increase right because if you write about what others have discussed the topics if you if you if you research your competitors you know what are the words to use what are the topics to use you will naturally kind of match their word count anyway or you may be a little bit lesser or maybe a little bit more and when you add your own word point it should really come close to your competitors or if some somehow a little bit less or somehow a little bit more right so yeah um word count doesn't matter but if you actually know what you write if you actually do done your research well you should probably hit the you know the average word count anyway so don't really have to worry about that so i hope this also benefits every one of you who have watched this as well remember this is not just apply to normal product review page this apply throughout on your on page right it's not just about your re product review is your overall on page strategies so um like you know dj norris um you you have taken my course i think you you have understood it well i think i highlighted how to kind of research your competitors and write what to write so i think you might be a little bit familiarized with what i said uh, a little bit of more information here like you know be specific and stuff like that but yeah so let me know if you have any questions all of you um i'm i'll be here for maybe another 10 more minutes and uh uh we'll end the stream okay 
Skillup says, thanks a ton, bro. You're welcome, Skillup. Let me know if any of you have any questions. Nari says, yes, what you said mirrors my other research. Yep. Basically, yeah, you have to research your competitors, make look at what they write, look at, you know, the topics they use on the page and stuff like that. And also remember, add your own unique points. Again, I also highlight this if you remember in, in the on page sections. You have to make sure it's is on page. Uh, is unique uh, as well, not just, you know, 100% um, regurgitating of what others have said. Um, if any of you have questions, feel free to let me know. I'll be here for maybe another 10 more minutes and we'll end the stream. Okay, I think I... Oh, yeah, okay, no, it wasn't all questions, all right. Skillef says, will my blog regain the lost ranking and traffic? Yes, my friend Skillef. Uh, did, were you present when I announce, when I go over the news for today? Um, Google says that they will do a periodically refresh on the algorithms. So periodically, they would kind of refresh and recalculate the score again. So I don't know when they won't announce it. They said they won't announce it. So Probably, I think, two or three weeks or a month. I'm not sure, but definitely you will regain if you have fixed it. So you have to wait anyway. They said it's not like the core updates where they will announce. They will refresh it periodically. We don't know how often. So definitely, if you fix it, you will have to wait and you will regain it once they refresh the algo. And uh, like my recommendation is probably don't do it throughout your con your entire website. You probably would want to pick you know few pages and try the strategies out first, because if you do it in a big way, you might not be able to track what you have done. So probably try out with this page first, or maybe another page, and see how it goes. If these both pages come back, then you can apply it throughout. But again, you know, they mentioned in their Twitter account that it's not an algorithm that's designed to demote, but to promote. So you basically lost your rankings because your competitors have been promoted. So you can look at your competitors and see why they're doing well and try to kind of figure it out on your own as to what you have done wrong. Right. And then see. Um, what you can fix but yeah whatever i discussed i mean those are very important anyway like you know you can try apply it and see what it, how it goes uh, research on your competitors as well you should get a good idea okay any questions anyone Luckily today the stream didn't, uh, the browser didn't crash and and you know exit, so the live stream was kept alive. Uh, let me also rename this to be uh, SEO live show full discussion uh, let me see Google product reviews algo full discussion Discussion. Let me see. Algorithm. Full discussion. Uh, 
or okay maybe I'll write detail discussion This should make a good title. Probably I might also remove this. Plus site audit. This is a seminar in which I go through what's new industry as well and also I go through a full discussion on the new Google product reviews algorithm update okay so that should make a good title probably it will help people find it easier all right any questions um five more minutes and i'll leave probably not Make good notes of this. Try. Any questions? Anyone still left in the chat? Okay, Norris says no questions for me. Thanks. You're welcome, Norris. I hope you learned. I mean, although you know you are in like a service type, like like you know you do client SEO, your client, uh, you know you you do client work basically, but this will definitely help you when it comes to your SEO on page strategies. It applies to all actually. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyone left in the chat who has questions? If no one has, I'm gonna end down. Skilla says learned a lot. Thanks a lot, brother. You're welcome Skilla. Two more minutes and we will end the stream. Also feel free to share these videos with your uh, affiliate uh, affiliate friends so they can learn as well of what to do because um, you know I'm in various F Facebook group right and I've seen lots of people got hit by this, like, you know, big, big hit um, overnight. So, and looks like very much like an a core update as well. What was that suck up sound? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Skillup says, I forgot to ask about the images. Uh, yeah, images, uh, I think you mentioned, I think, uh, regarding the policies, uh, the uh, Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure what you can do with the images, but I don't think it's not, it's, it's going to be a big part because, you know, um, again, Google is, is uh, Google uh, ability to process image is still not as good as their text. So if you can't do do the image, you can still pretty much get away with it uh, without it, because your competitors who are also Amazon's affiliate marketers are probably not going to do it as well, right? So uh, better focus on the word first, 
and if you can try somehow with the images anyhow you can do that otherwise I don't think it's going to be a bigger deal than the sentence or how you would do, use the words and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, like like what I said, right? Like your your fellow Amazon affiliate marketers are probably not going to use it anyway. And, you know, Amazon is is probably the most famous uh, affiliate uh, programs that people use. So, yeah, everyone is use, using it. So, yep, you're right. Focus more on the words. Images are probably not that important. Again, if you can add it, that's a plus. But uh, Google's ability to process image still very far from good. So, more importantly, they're looking for words words clues the uses of words okay so i guess that's uh, the end for today's um if you have any following up questions you can let me know in the comment section right after this chat um this live stream go public on youtube and uh again if you're in the facebook group you can always ask me questions there and that's all for it thank you for joining the live stream and happy rankings.